Hello everyone, in this video I will present a brief introduction to rotation matrices in robotics. As always, I created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. A link to this post is given in description below. First, we will explain the main motivation for defining and for introducing rotational matrices. So, let us assume that we have a coordinate system x0, y0, and z0 that you can see over here. And let us assume that this coordinate system is fixed. Now, let us rotate this coordinate system for some angle theta around z0 axis and let us denote this rotated, this newly rotated coordinate system by x1, y1 and z1. z1 is identical to z0 because this angle or actually the coordinate system x1, y1, z1 is rotated for certain angle and let the rotation angle be denoted by theta. Here's the theta symbol. Now, in this new coordinate system x1, y1, z1, we can observe a vector p. Now, before we introduce rotational matrices, we need to introduce a new notation. So when we write P and with this left superscript 1, we basically denote a vector P represented in the coordinate system 1. For example, if we have a two-dimensional plane or if we observe this situation from the top, from the top of the Z1 axis or Z0, Z0, Z1, the situation will look like this. This will be x0, this will be y0, this will be x1, and this will be y1. Here is our vector p. And we assume that the vector p is fixed with respect to the coordinate system x1, y1, z1. That is, the vector p rotates together with the coordinate system x1, z1, and y1. The representation of the vector p in the coordinate system 1 is given by its projection. So this projection over here, that is from here to here, will be p x 1. This projection will be p y 1. So when we write p with this left superscript 1, we mean vector p with the coordinates p x1 p y1 okay now what is the representation of the vector p in the coordinate system 0 it's given by its projection p x0 and p y0 and graphically these projections can be constructed as follows. So this is P x 0 and now this image is a little bit too busy. This will be over here P y 0. Now we are searching for a matrix that will transform the representations from the coordinate system 1 to coordinate system 0. That is, 
we're searching for a matrix that will perform this transformation. If we multiply the rotational matrix, here is how the rotational matrix is represented, by the vector P1, that is the representation of the vector P in the coordinate system 1. So if we perform this multiplication, we should obtain the vector P in the coordinate system 0. That is the representation of the vector P in the coordinate system 0. Here you can notice that I've wrote R1 in the subscript and 0 in the superscript. This means that this rotational matrix performs transformation of the representations of the vectors, vector P, from the coordinate system 1 to coordinate system 0. Sometimes in robotics, coordinate systems are also called frames. So we can say that this vector, or actually that this matrix R, transforms frame 1 to frame 0. That is the vectors from the frame 1 to frames to the frame 0. Now, in this representation, I deliberately forgot to include P Z0 and P Z1. So, generally speaking, since we live in three dimension, we have P0 is actually PX0, PY0, and PZ0, and P1 is nothing less than P. X1, PY1, and PZ1. So the transformation matrix will actually work on these vectors. And it will be 3 by 3 matrix since P1 is given by this form and P0 is given by this form. Only for illustration here, I have, I have represented these vectors in two-dimensional space. However, in reality, or in the examples that we will do in this video, P0 and P1 are three-dimensional vectors. Okay, so let us get back to our original post. Here is our coordinate system. Here is the original sketch, now nicely drawn. Here is the vector, or actually the axis x0, the axis y0, z0, fixed coordinate system. Then we have a coordinate system x1, y1, z1 that's being rotated for the angle theta. And this i0, j0, and k0 are the unit vectors of the coordinate system x0, y0, and z0. And similarly, i1, j1, and k1 are the unit vectors of the coordinate system 1. That is, of the, coordinated, of the coordinate system that's being rotated. Okay, so the main goal is to transform the vector P from the coordinate system 1 to the coordinate system 0. That is to transform the representation of the vector P from the coordinate system 1 to the coordinate system 0. For that purpose, we can simply write the vector P1 by using its projections. Here we have the projections px1, py1, pz1. And we want to compute the projections px0, py0, and pz0. Now, if we multiply the equation p1 by the unit vector i0, and here when I say multiply, I mean the scalar multiplication, that is a vector dot product. And taking into account that vector dot product is distributive, we obtain the equation, the first equation in the, in the system of equation 3, right? So p scalarly i0 becomes this thing. Similarly, PY0 is nothing less than a projection of P vector re represented in the coordinate system 1 onto the axis X0. And to compute that projection, we scalarly multiply this vector by J0. And we obtain this expression. 
And similarly, we can find the projection of P1 onto the axis Z0 by, si by simply multiplying P1 by K0, by the unit vector of the Z0 axis. Now, the last equation can be written in the matrix form. Here, on the left-hand side, we can see P0, that is the representation of the vector P in the zero-coordinate system. Here is representation of the vector P in the coordinate system 1, and here is our rotational matrix. So the elements of the rotational matrix are these scalar products. So what can we observe here? So the first column is the projection of the unit vector I1 onto the coordinate system I defined by I0, J0, and K0. That is the projection onto the coordinate system 0. So to construct the first column, we take I1 and we find the projections of I1 onto the coordinate system x0, y0, and z0. Similarly, the second column is the projection of the vector j1, of the unit vector j1, onto the coordinate system 0. And similarly, the third column is the projection of the k1 unit vector on the coordinate system 0. This is how we construct the rotational matrices. Now, let us observe and let us analyze this term. So what is this term? We know from mathematics that the scalar product of two vectors is the product of its intensity times the cosinus of angle between do, these two vectors. So here is the expression. Since the, these are unit vectors, their intensities are 1 times 1 times cosinus theta. So we obtain cosinus theta. So the first entry is the cosinus theta. Similarly, the second entry is the sinus theta and the third entry is zero. So let us graphically confirm this. So here is the picture. We have a coordinate system that's being fixed. We have y1 or actually this is x y0 x0, then we have a co rotated coordinate system. Here is x1, y1. And then here we have unit vector i1. And of course, here we should denote z1 and z0. So what are the projections? of the vector i1 onto the coordinate system x0, y0, z0. Let's find these projections. So this is the projection onto the axis x0. This projection is equal to 1, since the intensity of the vector i1 is 1. It's 1 time cosinus theta. So here we have cosinus theta. How, how about the projection of the vector i1 onto the y0 axis? So obviously this projection is 1 times sinus theta. And the last projection is 0 since the vector i1 lives in the plane x1 and y1 and z0 is perpendicular to this plane. Now, how about the unit vector of the y1 axis. Let's see. So obviously this angle is here theta and the projections onto the x-axis, x0 axis, is this segment over here and this segment is equal to minus sinus theta since the projection is negative then the projection onto the y0 axis is what is cosinus theta and then we have zero now how about the units vectors of the z1 axis this is k1 so we see k1 
like this. That is, we see the point of the arrow and its projection is going to be 0, 0 and 1. That is its projection onto the axis Z0. So this is how we construct the rotational matrices. Now, a nice property of the rotational matrices is that these matrices are orthonormal, meaning that their inverses are equal to their transposes. So, let's multiply this equation by the inverse of R10. So, if you multiply this equation by the inverse R10, we basically perform this operation. That is, we compute the inverse transform. That is, we represent, we transform vectors from the coordinate system 1 to the coordinate system 1. That is, from the coordinate system 0 to the coordinate system 1. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like this video or the other videos I make, please subscribe or support this channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.